Hi, this is Steve Leone. We're at InterSolar North America 2012 in San Francisco. And I'm here with Ed Cahill of Lux Research. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you, you recently finished a report that was focused on HCPV, which is a, an emerging technology, highly efficient, uh, and uh, really goes into the, those high DNI areas that, that frankly don't have a lot of installations at this point. But you took a look at uh, how the industry is going to compete on a cost basis and, and kind of what, what it's going to take to get there. Uh, why don't you give us a, a brief roadmap on pricing when HCPV may become competitive with you know, some of the leaders right now, both tracked and untracked, of course. Sure. Uh, and when you're talking about HCPV, you certainly need to look at uh, the levelized cost of electricity. And especially with HCPV having uh, dual access tracking, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be competing against uh, largely multi-crystalline silicon in, on both fixed and single access tracked mm -hmm. um, trackers. So it, uh, on that scale, right now it's, it's fairly far away from being competitive, but uh, in about five years, uh, HCPV catches up with both uh, crystalline silicon fixed and tracked. Okay. So what's going to drive that, that decreasing level of, uh, of difference between the two technologies? Well, there's a lot of levers that you can pull, uh, but the, the biggest lever that you have is the efficiency. And I know that's uh, a rhetoric often used in the industry, but for HCPV, it's an extremely material heavy technology. Mm -hmm. So the, the more efficient you have your modules, the fewer of that bulk material that you need and uh, the fewer trackers that you need. And it also cuts down on maintenance costs, which is a big factor and the reason why it's not competitive at the moment. So that's going to be the, the largest lever that HTTP com companies can use to get down to competitive costs. Okay, so at the, at the cell level, what you know, where are we right now in terms of the high end of efficiencies and where can we get in, you know, say 10 years? Uh, right now, the, the best commercially available cells are uh, around 40% efficient. And um, there is a strong roadmap to get to 45% efficient in five years and 50% efficient beyond that. And the key advantage that they have here is that cell manufacturers don't really need to worry about costs as much in concentrating photovoltaics because of how little cell area you actually need for the devices. So they're really just driving for efficiency and they can just concentrate on that. And of course, we always talk about how scaling up really leads to a lot of cost cuts, but HCPV is technically harder to scale up just because it's a highly automated process. It's very, very precise, precise positioning that needs to happen. Uh, is, how does that happen? How is scaling up going to happen with something that, that you, know, you need to do high automation right off the bat? Yeah, and it's, it's a big risk for companies to scale up uh, because of all the automation that you need. So really, uh, HTTP companies need to be very smart in the way that they scale up. And we're seeing a lot of companies securing their pipeline, getting those installations planned before they actually scale up to capacities that can meet those pipelines. And uh, I think that's the smart way to go. Okay, so we, we've seen some, you know, combination of, of smaller companies teaming up with, with big energy companies that have global distribution and global reach. Uh, you know, two smaller ones that come to mind is, is Greenvolts and Semprius. Uh, is that a partnership that you're going to see develop between a lot of smaller companies kind of looking for that more established resource? Absolutely, and uh, I think that's a trend that's also in the larger PV industry for uh, small companies with newer technologies. And um, you know, we've already seen it for HCPV with Soytech and Concentrics, mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that they have that backing really allows them to increase their bankability and obtain financing for their their projects that they have planned. Okay, so who are, who are some some companies to watch here in the in the short term? Well, Ammonix has always been the market leader for um, HCPV, but the, the, really the door is open for some of these small companies. So 
uh, Soytec uh, is one that has the big name behind it. It has a large pipeline. It's scaling up its manufacturing. Um, also, Soul Focus has another large pipeline, mm -hmm. and it's actually been able to obtain bank financing for its projects. So that's mm -hmm. definitely one to look for. And then Suncor is, is unique in the fact that it's manufacturing in China. And China will be a fastly growing market for HCPV. Okay, any other specific markets to point to in, that are maybe going to be the, the first movers in terms of these uh, utility scale type operations? Yeah, so HCPV, since it's so material heavy, it mm -hmm. really uh, needs manufacturing near where their end product is going. Mm -hmm. So initially, most installations will be in the United States and China. Okay. But in the long term, uh, we're seeing a strong growth in emerging markets such as Saudi Arabia and India, where they have a lot of sunlight and a lot of need for electricity. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Appreciate the time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much.